If your organization uses Skype for Business Online, if it hasn't already, it will be moving to Microsoft Teams. While many tools and services remain the same or look similar, some have changed, whether that's placement or the look and functionality. Let's take a look at the major ones. We're going to start with instant messaging, what was known as IM in Skype for Business Online. In Teams, it's now referred to as chat, and it's located on the left navigation. From this chat area, you can see existing chats that have taken place, and you can start new chats. From anywhere that you may be working within the Teams application, you'll always have this pencil icon to start a new chat. Just a quick shortcut to take you back to the chat area, and it has initiated a chat where you can type the name of the person or the people that you would like to chat with. If you'd like to have an online meeting take place in Teams, you can do this in a couple of different ways. If we go to the meetings area, you can see meetings that are currently scheduled on your Outlook calendar in this view as well as join any upcoming meetings. At the bottom, you can select Schedule a Meeting, fill out the appropriate fields for this meeting to take place within a team channel or maybe not in a team channel. Once ready, you'll select Schedule to send that meeting invitation on its way. Instead, let's select Close for now. If you'd like to have what's called a Meet Now that was available in Skype for Business Online, it's an ad hoc meeting, a meeting that you are starting and it's an instant meeting that will take place for participants to join. This is something that will now take place in a team channel. So we need to navigate to Teams, go to the team, we're in Community Volunteers, go to the channel, we're currently in the General Channel, and from the Conversations tab, locate at the bottom of this area where you can start a new conversation. Just under this field is where you can start Meet Now. The icon looks like a camera. By selecting this camera, you have the opportunity to give that meeting a subject, enable or disable your webcam, choose the orientation of the camera if you have multiple cameras that you're working with, and once ready, select Meet Now to start that meeting. A notification will be auto-posted in the conversation of this channel that the meeting has started, and it will take you into that meeting space. Here you have the familiar stage area, with some of the same functionality that you had in a Skype for Business online meeting. Turn the camera on or off, mute the microphone or unmute, share things from the share tray, like applications or your desktop, and even a whiteboard. Additional options and a way to hang up on this meeting. Let's go ahead and end the meeting. Within this conversation panel, here's the notification that the meeting has ended and how was the call quality. If you would like to schedule a meeting from this Meet Now area, if we go back to Meet Now, notice that underneath Meet Now, where we started that instant meeting, is an additional way to schedule a meeting. This is a shortcut that will take you back to the new meeting menu. Let's go ahead and close that for now. To customize all settings for the Microsoft Teams application, including language, audio and video settings, you'll need to go ahead and select the area where you can log in and log out of the application. You may see a picture in this placeholder. If not, your initials will appear here. From this menu, you can change your presence status just like you did in Skype for Business Online. And notice that that icon, that presence status, will show up for your name and for all of your colleagues or other guests of your team that you're working with. In addition to some of those familiar things like your present status and setting a status message, to change your settings, locate the cog and then select settings. From the navigation on the left, you can go to various areas to update the general settings, like how you'd like the application to start, what theme you'd like to work with in language. You can update privacy, who's going to have priority access when your present status is set to do not disturb how you would like to receive notifications for app mentions, messages, and other items, and your preferred devices that you would like to use for those audio and video calls. Because there's so many things that interact with the Teams application, you'll also find permissions here for media navigation, notifications, and other components to work. And finally, your call preferences. That's making changes to the settings for your ringtone, for your voicemail, and accessibility. Let's go ahead and select the X in the upper right corner to close the settings menu. 
Let's also go ahead and minimize the Teams application. If your organization is getting ready to make the transition from Skype for Business to Teams, you may want to check these sites out. The Skype for Business to Teams Capabilities Roadmap PDF, as you see it here, will help you with knowing what functionality is available and what is planned, what is upcoming. By scrolling through this list, you can see the messaging roadmap. What's available today? The meetings roadmap. Again, what is available today? Or what is scheduled? And as we scroll through, we can even see calling roadmap. There are additional resources at the bottom of this that may be helpful as well. The Skype and Teams Fast Track site can help you get started on your upgrade journey. This is from enlisting project stakeholders to deployment and operation excellence. To get the latest Microsoft 365 updates, check out this site. I currently have this filtered to just display Teams updates. You can see that there are currently 73 updates, 32 in development, 8 that are rolling out, and 33 that are launched. The Microsoft Teams Survival Guide is a great place to get deployment and adoption, administrator, developer, and training resources. And that's how you can get started on your journey from Skype for Business Online to Microsoft Teams.